Hey, it's your delivered package. I'm on your doorstep freezing my cardboard flaps off while you're lounging in Bali. With Key by Amazon in-garage delivery, I could be safe and snug in your garage. Just link your MyQ account with Key by Amazon and hit free in-garage delivery at Amazon Prime Checkout. Get your garage door MyQ connected with the MyQ Smart Garage Control for $29. Use promo code KEY30. For a $30 credit after your first delivery, visit myq.com slash podcast. With Key by Amazon in-garage delivery, you'll soak in the sun and I won't soak in the rain. Hey Eagles fans, this is Mike K from NJ Advance Media and welcome to the No Huddle Show podcast where we discuss anything and everything Philadelphia Eagles. You can read our content on nj.com slash eagles, bookmark that, and you can subscribe to our exclusive Eagles Insider Tech Service where we'll break news, give you insider observations, and provide in-depth analysis. Through Eagles Extra, you can send questions and comments directly to us and we'll respond to your phone. With me today, as always, is my fellow Eagles beat reporter, Chris Franklin. Today we're going to discuss tank or not to tank, the Carson Wentz-Doug Peterson dynamic, and what's the right answer for the offseason leadership group. Chris, how are you doing today? Not too bad, Mike. Not too bad at all. It's, it's hard to believe this year has flown by and we're already at the final week of the season, man. But and it's, it's been a lot of fun working with you and, and, and talking to, and sharing this with everybody else. But it's been crazy, man. How are you doing? I'm well, man. Um, you know, I'm ready to focus on the off season. I think this is going to be an interesting, very busy one for us and for the Eagles organization. Um, we're going to have a lot of work to do uh, from a writing and, and coverage standpoint. And the Eagles are going to have a lot to do from a writing the ship standpoint. So everybody's going to be busy. Um, and we hope that you listeners will listen along as we go through what is going to be a uh, a franchise altering off season. Now everybody always says that every year, but you know, there's a legitimate chance of some major changes at the top. There's going to be a mass exodus of exodus of veterans. I mean, this is going to be a very involved off season. And uh, you know, I, I think that's actually kind of exciting. It's going to breathe some new life into this team, whether it comes from a new GM, a new head coach, uh, a new offensive coordinator, a new defensive coordinator, just a whole bunch of new faces on the roster. I just think like, now the playoffs are out of the picture. Fans can have fun again, and it's fun for us to cover this team again. Um, so, Chris, let's just get into it. Uh, they The Eagles play Washington. They can play spoiler. If Washington wins, they're automatically in the playoffs. If the Eagles win, uh, barring a Giants-Cowboys tie, Washington will be eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, right now, it's looking like Alex Smith is like a 50-50 shot to start a quarterback. Taylor Heineke, uh, I, who I was a big fan of when he was coming out of the draft as a backup quarterback, um, he's he could potentially start. Dwayne Haskins was cut on Tuesday. A lot going on on both sides of the ball. Should the Eagles tank or should they play hard, impress Jeffrey Lurie with how much they've bought into – Doug Peterson and maybe screw up their shot at having a top five draft pick. What do you say? I think they should go ahead and still continue to play hard. I think you go ahead and you finish the year on a, a good note and you use that momentum to go ahead into the 2021 season. I still think Washington is going to win no matter what. And given the amount of injuries this team has and seeing who's going to be available, which probably won't be a lot. I don't think they're going, I don't think it's going to, even be put a dent into what Washington could possibly do. I know Alex Smith is still questionable to the point of if he's going to play, but I still think this team is going to go ahead and uh, I think Washington is still going to be able to beat the Eagles the way in this current the current the way they're currently constructed. So I say they go ahead, they go ahead, they play hard. And now if it gets to a point where the second half Washington is up by twenty nothing or twenty eight nothing, say what, what have you. Then I say you go ahead and you pull most of the veteran guys out there and you just have to let let the tank fully commence and then you go from there. I mean, what do you think you sh- they should do? Well, I mean, I think they should go into it trying to win the game. Um, I Like you said, I mean, look, I think <laughs> players are always going to want to win the game. We heard what Jason Kelsey said a couple of weeks ago. You know, players play to win and so does Jalen Hurts. And while the fan base probably doesn't want to hear this, I think Jalen Hurts having a really good game against a team that's really doing everything to make the playoffs is an encouraging sign for his future. 
this is a really, really good defense. And if Jalen Hurts can perform well with uh, a banged up offensive line and a bunch of young wide receivers, you know, it, it's intriguing. I, I, I actually think they're going to play spoiler. Um, I think the, once the playoffs are out of the picture, the pick is more important. Um, but I do think that they, what they should do is play all their young kids. And if they win, they win. But I just don't know what they're getting out of playing the veterans. That's That's been my stance all year. I don't really see what the point is. There's no way that Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson are back next season. Um, I mean, I, I just don't really know what the point is of trying to, it's fine if you win with the young kids, because then you have some upside and you go into the off season thinking, wow, now, now you've got, uh, some guys you can, can kind of depend on next year or at least count on for, for some potential. But I, I just don't really see, I mean, you saw what happened. Look, Deshaun Jackson had this incredible 81 yard, uh, touchdown that was terrific. And then he disappeared for the rest of the game. So I, I just, I don't really see an upside in starting the veterans. I'm not saying tank this game. You should plan to win the game, but you should also play your young kids. Uh, You know, the injury report for Wednesday just came out um, and it is long. So here are the players who did not practice today. We're recording this on a Wednesday. This will go up on Thursday morning. Derek Barnett, Sean Bradley, Fletcher Cox, Dallas Goddard, Deshaun Jackson, Michael Jaquette. Jordan Melata, Duke Riley, and Richard Rogers. Oh, sorry. Uh, Duke Riley practiced, but he was limited. Instead, Quez Watkins was a DNP. Uh, look, I don't. I mean, I I don't really see the need to rush any of these guys onto the field if they have injuries. What says you? Well, I was. Re- I really hope. Like, I think Watkins. I think I'd rather sit him down because I think he's shown in flashes and a very limited time that he's been on the field what he can really show. I mean, I really thought. I, I, I know it's really putting him out there in a position he's not really used to. I really wanted to see Sean Bradley out there playing the Sam or the strong side linebacker position just to see if he can go ahead and do it because you have guys like you have Nate Gary. That's going to be a free agent. I mean, Alex Singleton, I think he's a free agent, but I think a lot of teams now see what he could possibly do and see what type of play, what abilities he has to go ahead and play and like playing against like in coverage and how far he's come because we know he's good against the, in, against the run, but you kind of want to see what abilities he has to go in his pass coverage. And if he can go ahead and fill what well, that strong size spot, I think you can go ahead and you may not have to use a high draft pick on another linebacker and go two years where you use a considerable amount of resources on that position. So I, I really was looking forward to uh, Bradley being in there. I mean, Watkins, Watkins can't go. Hopefully John Hightower can show that he's, he, he can go ahead and uh, pick some, he's picked some stuff up since the last time we've seen him. So those would be the ones there. I mean, are there any disappointments on this list that you wanted to see? No, I don't care. I mean, I, I think George, I think George made a lot of playing. It would be important, but other than that, I don't, I don't really think it matters. Um, so let's uh, let's kind of get into something I wrote about the other day: uh, the Carson Wentz Doug Peterson dynamic. Um, I'm of the belief that, barring anything unforeseen. If I'm Jeffrey Lurie, I don't know how I trust Doug Peterson to fix Carson Wentz. I also don't know if Carson Wentz wants to reestablish that relationship with the head coach. Now, I'm not trying – look, I'm not trying to project or anything like that. I'm just saying it didn't work all year. They tried to change things, and it didn't work. I'm not saying these guys hate each other. I'm just saying I don't know if the two can bring the best out of each other anymore. And that's something that Jeffrey Lurie really needs to Christian ponder. And, uh, you know, (laughs) I I, thank you. Um, I I just to me, I think it's a one or the other situation. Where are you at with that? I think they both can coexist and come back. But I think it's going to take a lot of soul searching. I think it's going to take a lot of time. I think the time this month that Wentz has been on the sideline and has been away from the team, I think that's been very beneficial. And I think a whole another offseason can be beneficial because I would love to see him get with, say, like a Jordan Palmer to go ahead and start working out some of these issues that he's having right now when it comes to his mechanics, when it comes to even just 
his mental outlook on on the way to the game because it looked like he was shell shocked at toward the end of the things. He, he was double clutching on, on on when guys were open. He didn't look so sure of himself and. I think that is. I think it's definitely possible to go ahead and do it. I think he just need. I'd give him one more shot. I think with the way this this duo, the duo of Peterson and Wentz, give him one more shot to see if they can go ahead and and right the ship. Especially if you're going to have to pay the money, no matter what, might as well see if you can go ahead and fix the things. And if not, and the team has the same type of outcome, you go ahead. You go ahead and clean house. You have more cap room the following year and. You'll have another high draft pick for a new uh, GM and new coach to go ahead and get their system in place. So I, I think Doug Peterson's still a very good coach. I still think he's a, a very good offensive mind, and I think he's a, still a very good teacher. And I would love to see him come back to go ahead and have a chance to go ahead and, and, and write the things that are wrong. And I think Wentz is still a very good quarterback. He's not going to be a top five quarterback. I think he has the ability to go ahead and be a top 12, maybe top 10 on, on uh, from every year here or there out. But Given if you have enough weapons around them, you can go ahead. That's great, good enough to go ahead and have a decent offense. So I, I'd still bring both of them back. I don't know. I just think the offense is just really sputtered. Uh, the last two years have not been good. They've regressed in every one of the last three years. Look, Carson and, and Doug led a, a four-game winning streak to end last season, and it was terrific. But it, it also kind of felt like it was more to do with their opponents than really the overall – the overarching resiliency of this team. You know, they only played the NFC East and the NFC East was awful this year. They're going to finish either in last place or or second to last place in the worst division in football. Like this is a really, I mean, look, there, there might be trust issues here. There might be, you know, we've seen reports of Carson Wentz not being happy with how the situation has played out. You look tired. I take it the caffeine, toothpaste, and adrenaline face serum aren't working? Well, maybe you should ask Santa for a Nectar mattress this year. And if the big guy brings you another unicorn finger puppet, don't worry, because mattresses start at just $499, and you get $399 in accessories thrown in, as well as a 365-night home trial and a forever warranty. Go to Nectarsleep.com today. And I just don't know how you bring back the four central figures of Howie Roseman, Doug Peterson, Carson Wentz, and Jalen Hurts. I just don't see how that works. And frankly, if if you're bringing back Carson, it's going to be difficult to have an open competition because Carson's going to be guaranteed $15 million more million by the third day of the, of the league year. So then you're looking at potentially trading Jalen Hurts. And unless you're getting a first round pick and change for Jalen Hurts, the Eagles look even worse for picking him in the second round because they've created all this drama and and intrigue that was completely unnecessary for a minimal gain. I, I just, to me, it's just very difficult to see both Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz coming back and working as a unit. Um, Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before, but for my outlook, I just kind of don't know if, you know, I'm not saying they have a bad relationship. I'm just saying I don't know if they can work efficiently enough together. I just think there's a square, pe- there's a round peg and a square hole, and it's just not working right now. I mean, the regression was amazing in a bad way. Uh, moving on from that, with that said, you know, I think we need to talk about the guys at the top, right? So you, we brought up the four dudes who were the main like overarching names this year. It's Doug Peterson, Howie Roseman, Carson Wentz, and Jalen Hurts. But there's also, you know, a lot of people on on the coaching staff. We know that they have one of the biggest coaching staffs in the league. Defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz is routinely criticized by fans. Um, Dave Fipp is routinely criticized by everyone. Um, What's your outlook? Give me three moves the Eagles need to make to make this – front office and this leadership group better i think they have to go i i'm under the i just have this feeling that you're going to see a lot of the, the uh, three of those four i think i see all of those four you named will be back but i think when you look i think the eagles have to go ahead and hire an established offensive coordinator either at a college or pro rent, pro level and go ahead and give them play calling responsibilities or have a majority, 75, 80% of the play calling responsibilities. I think that's the first one. Second one, and I think this one is going to be the, 
it, it, it's I know it's going to sound minor because everybody thinks it's all special teams, but I think I think it may be time for Dave Fit to, Fit to be gone. I mean, the coverage units are doing do well. I mean, but the other thing is when you look at the kickers, when you look at the return game, especially you have so many pieces. I know, and this is the part where I know that Dave Fit is not doesn't have that much say when it comes to personnel, but. When it comes to scheming up a lot of these things, a lot of these plays, the kick returns and everything else here or there, this team could get so much more out, out of the way as well, too. You just see it, and it's, it's just rough. So I think – I mean, I, I, I like Dave Fipp. I think he's done in the past. He's done a great job. But I think he may be one of the guys that are that – are, that, are, that, that goes ahead. And I think that uh, if they're able to go ahead and John Dorsey is not hired, I think John Dorsey should be named the assistant general manager. And he should have, I, I'd actually, at this point, I'd give him final say when it comes to uh, personnel decisions. Because when you look at the draft picks that this team has, has made and you look at the progress a lot of these draft picks have made, it's, it's few and far between. Some of them look like they could be guys that are contributors. I mean, don't get me wrong. Howie did a good job drafting my lot in the seventh round, and he's developed into potentially a starting tackle. But there's too many stories where you start to look at this roster and these draft picks and nothing happens. So I probably, if I had to recap, I'd probably say Dorsey becomes the assistant general manager, but i probably behind the scenes give him final say on the draft picks. You hire an office, a coordinator, and you get a new special teams coach. How about you, man? What are you, what are you going to change? Well, I, I, you, I, you and I are on the same page as far as an assistant GM is concerned. Uh, I probably wouldn't go to Dorsey. Um, I just kind of think that he's already been here. And, you you know, it's kind of like the offensive staff, right? You brought in some new voices and it really hasn't shown anything. Um, some reports say that uh, Dorsey's been helping as far back as April. And then others are saying that it's August. Either way, um, I don't know... It, what Dorsey's role would be outside of personnel. And so that's my thing. I think they're going to keep Howie Roseman. I do think they're going to figure out whether they want Doug Peterson or Carson Wentz. I think like it's going to be a one or the other right now. I think there is going to be, this is just a guess. This is just a guess, but if they keep Doug Peterson, I think they need to trade Carson Wentz. If they get rid of Doug Peterson, they need to fire. Bleh, they need to hire a head coach that is fully bought into Carson Wentz. It's one or the other. So that's my. those are my first two moves. An assistant GM with a lot of personnel say, even if it's not final say, he needs to be running the personnel department. Then second, they need to figure out if it's Carson Wentz or Doug Peterson. Uh, and if it's Doug Peterson, they need to really go – you know, by the horns with Jalen Hurts, bringing a veteran to compete with him, but then figure out how to how to trade Carson Wentz. If it's Carson Wentz, you need to decide to move on from Doug Peterson and you need to hire a coach who can rehabilitate Carson Wentz and who is fully bought into Carson Wentz. Hello, Arthur Smith. Um, <laughs> and then I think it's time for a change on defense. I think Jim Schwartz has had a decent run here. I think he gets way more flack than uh, he deserves from fans. But I do think at some point you do need to switch up your defensive philosophies. Uh, the numbers are, are okay are, are good to okay for, for Schwartz, but I just think it's time for a new voice there. I do think they need some new leadership there, uh, you know, I'm over the whole not valuing linebackers and leaving these corners on islands and not performing. They haven't been able to develop a, a defensive back outside of Jalen Mills since they've been here. Avante Maddox has regressed mightily. Jalen Mills hasn't been a, a good at any position. He's been okay at two different positions. I just think it's time to make some moves and uh, really change up the voices in that defensive meeting room. It's time. It's been five years. Every now and then you do need to make a change for the sake of a change. And I think a lot of people would support the Jim Schwartz uh, moving on. I think Schwartz can rebound really quickly. He's a very good defensive coordinator and go become a defensive coordinator for on a new staff. Um, but I do think it's time to kind of mix things up, especially when you're going to go for a youth movement on defense. There are going to be some moving pieces, especially with the veteran guys. And I, I just think that that's kind of the right move right now. So, with that said, uh, what's your score for uh, Sunday? 
I have Washington. I think Washington is going to win it. I think I think it's like I don't think it's going to be something like twenty eight to twenty. I think it's going to be. It's going to look close. It's going to look close early on, and but because he has, if Alex Smith winds up being the quarterback, he's going to have to go ahead and get used to the gain speed and everything else again. But I think he goes ahead and uh, he's able to go ahead and lead it. And unfortunately, I know that this team has been trying to fight the whole celebration on at the Lincoln Financial Field thing, but unfortunately, I think the inevitables happen. So what do you think about what will happen uh, this week, this Sunday? I think Heineke's going to end up playing, or Alex is going to push himself, and it's just not going to work out. I, I, I just have this weird feeling the Eagles are going to play spoilers. So I got Eagles 20, Washington 16. Uh, it's going to upset a lot of people in the fan base, but... You know, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, so let's get a prediction going. Um, you think they're going to, you said earlier, just to clarify, you think that they're, when we look at Howie, Doug, Jim Schwartz, and Carson Wentz, who stays of the four? I think they all come back. I think everybody's coming back. I think they're going to chalk it up to one of those things where it was a COVID year, there was a lot of injuries. And these are the right guys, and, and we know how loyal, loyal at times that Jeffrey Lurie has been. So I think everybody's – I know a lot of people won't be happy with this, but I think everybody's coming back, man. What do you think? I think that it'll either be – well, I think Howie's back. And then I think it'll either be one of Doug Peterson or Carson Wentz who's back. I'm not really sure – like, I, I don't feel good about either one, but I think it'll be one or the other, and I think Schwartz is probably gone. Ooh, uh, and, I'm, and I'm curious too. If Schwartz is going, who who are you gonna? I know I know we're getting way ahead of this, but if Schwartz is going, who are you gonna bring in as defensive coordinator? I wonder how they feel about Marquan Manuel. Um, but I mean, look, I, I think it's tough to kind of like quantify who you. I think Tyrell Austin could make sense. I think uh, Chris Richard could make sense. There are guys out there that make sense a defensive coordinator. It just kind of depends on how the other moving and shaking of the of the league goes, really. Um, you know, I haven't really fully done bought into all the research, but if Schwartz were to go, who would you have? I'm bringing in Steve Wilkes. I think he I think he's established himself beforehand as a really good defensive coordinator. I think he he can go ahead and take the talent that this team has. I think you'll still be able to get the pass rush that you ha- have as well, too. And I think you go ahead and uh, improve the secondary if if Schwartz was going. But I still I still am pretty confident in, in, in Schwartz. I think I really think if this defense were able to go ahead and get a top cornerback, if they take one in draft or a cornerback and they can go ahead and contribute, I mean, it would have been really nice to see Jeremy Chen here. But if they get a, another uh, cornerback to go ahead and help, I think that goes ahead and – Fixes a lot of a lot of issues this has, and just imagine you have that pass rush, a pass rush like the one you had this year, and you have the secondary that can go ahead and, and cover their guys man to man. I mean, just imagine the the damage that defense can inflict. So that's what I, I that's that's why I really think that he's. I, I just have that gut feeling, and I mean, lately the gut's been getting kind of bigger because you know you know not Chipotle, but and that, gut, <laughs> that gut's telling me that hey, you know what? I think he's coming back. Well. We will be covering all the moving and shaking of Black Monday and beyond. We'll be covering all this stuff from the offseason. We'll be co- covering the Carson Wentz saga. Uh, make sure to check out my article uh, on Carson Wentz, the dynamic between Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson and why that needs to be figured out before making any other moves. Also, check out Chris's article on NJ.com slash Eagles. He interviewed Kurt Warner, and Kurt Warner went to bat for Doug Peterson, and he explains why. You can sign up for Eagles Extra on NJ.com slash text. Get two weeks free. Uh, come enjoy the offseason with us. If anything happens coaching-wise, we'll send that straight to your phone. Make sure you sign up uh, and enjoy some of that. We'll have some Q&As throughout the offseason. I'm very big on those, especially during the offseason because I like to kill the time. But I also like to experience and understand what you guys are thinking uh, as we go through it. Chris and I will be firing away throughout the off season. So it's important to sign up for Eagles extra at nj.com slash text. You can download the no huddle show podcast, wherever podcasts are available. Happy new year, guys. Thank you for rolling with us throughout this season. And if you've been here longer than that, we really appreciate you listening. Make sure you download us 
and give us five star ratings, uh, give us feedback on YouTube and so on. We really appreciate you. Uh, we're kind of glad to get through 2020. Uh, here's to a beautiful 2021. Hopefully, hopefully the Eagles turn things around and, and they make the offseason pretty interesting for all of us. For Chris, I'm Mike. We'll see you next year. Hey, it's your delivered package. I'm on your doorstep freezing my cardboard flaps off while you're lounging in Bali. With Key by Amazon in-garage delivery, I could be safe and snug in your garage. Just link your MyQ account with Key by Amazon and hit free in-garage delivery at Amazon Prime Checkout. Get your garage door MyQ connected with the MyQ Smart Garage Control for $29. Use promo code KEY30. For a $30 credit after your first delivery, visit myq.com slash podcast. With Key by Amazon in-garage delivery, you'll soak in the sun and I won't soak in the rain.